right. Hello, and welcome to the Jeff Fishing Vlog. Now it's a perfect time to start recording after we catch the fish. Well, we got this little catfish out here on the Ohio River. And today I'm going to share some of my better bank fishing tips with you. Bob, you know, especially uh, on the Ohio River in particular and the stretch that I'm on. Probably not going to share with you my better video recording tips because, you know, if I'd had the camera recording, you'd have seen that nice little catch. Would have seen the, the rod get knocked over in the water <laughs> while, I was, while I was trying to hook this rod up. But we'll get back to that, to that in a moment. But this little guy was caught on one of them butter worms that was left over from our last trip. And I hope you guys enjoy today's video. If you do, of course, like, subscribe. Always leave me a comment, uh, especially about what your favorite fishing trip has been on a river, whether it's been bank fishing or, you know, out in a boat or whatever. I've done quite a bit of both. So I'm going to go ahead and share with you one of the other things that I try and practice whenever I'm out here. That is, I always bring a bait fish rod, which I caught a little piece of bait fish on it. I took and cut it and put cut bait on this one. And I don't know if it was just the weight of it or if I actually had fish. Then whenever you're using these bells, these little bite alarms, if you have multiple rods out, if you're fishing with multiple people, it's a good idea to just have different types. Uh, that way you can tell from the different rattles which rod is actually getting the bite if you're not looking at them. With this guy, I'm pretty shallow. But I see bait fish moving around in here. I think anywhere there's bait fish, that, that's where you're going to find fish. That's definitely going to be where the feed the fish are at. And whenever I'm fishing the river, you know, the Ohio River in particular, and if I'm not seeing evidence of bait fish, I, I don't like my chances. I just try and move to see where there's bait fish now. I had this little creek over here. I know the river is slightly on a rise today and it's going to fall. Sometimes start falling, sometimes tonight or sometimes tomorrow. Or it's expected to fall. I'm a firm believer in the best time to go is any time. But any time you can catch the river rising, the odds of the fish moving in and feeding are a lot better. Fishing should be a lot easier. Now I'm using the drop shot style rig on this rod, on this rod and reel. And whenever I have it in the water, this is definitely the rod and reel. Like you, you may not be able to see it, but my big rod, I ended up laying it down. But I, I've got the egg sinker, then. Uh, then a swivel and then the hook and the bait after it so that that presentation it's going to just be sitting right on the bottom the bait is going to be on the bottom or moving a little bit with the current but with this presentation whenever you're bait fishing it, it is important that you want that you want your rod up so you're actually presenting the bait up off the ground which is the attention of the fish far out there. So I assume you see that barge in the background. It's pretty common for the barge to go by, the waves to pick up, and for whatever reason it moves the bait fish around and they move the bait fish around a little more. And oftentimes that's when we get our bites and just as likely that we're catching our bigger fish at that moment. 
I'd like to share with you another tip that Mike and I had picked up years ago. And oftentimes, whenever you're fishing, especially bank fishing like this, you might have some time in between fights. And you can't always just sit right there. Sometimes you got to manage the fire. You're taking fish off the hook while you've got other fish, while you got other reels and rod and reels on the. So I'm gonna share with you a neat tip that I like to employ, especially whenever I know I'm not gonna be able to just be right by my rod and reels the entire time I have bait in the water. And I know we all have got a ton of these little 99 cent stringers. I'm sure the price will go up soon. But anyway, we just take it and run it through like that. Make sure you get that good in the ground. And it, it's not a, you know, I, I wouldn't call it a hundred percent safety that that ground there is pretty. But I've got my bait alarm set up on this one, so I'm pretty confident that if something takes it and it goes to take the reel in the water, I'll, I'll be, you know, between that, that, and the, the bait alarm, I'll be able to save the reel. And hopefully catch the fish. We, we caught the fish that way some a few times and we lost the fish. A few times I have a piece of shrimp out on here. Just to get all tucked in. We're gonna cast this one back out. water I'd seen where like a straight line where the waves were kind of making a straight line so I grabbed my small rod and went over there and fished and actually got a couple of bites and one decent bite and missed it uh, I had my two rods over here with the bells on them but just as an added measure I took and opened up the bail and opened up the button on the quick button one that way if a fish did get on I'm trying to burp I would uh 
it would just take the line. Well, I decided to move down back to this spot, and that is exactly what happened, was I went back, I reeled up my push button rod, and got it set. And when as I was setting that one down, I'd seen my big open face, my big, old, big dance rod just line started taking off on it. So I picked it up, set the bail, and there's a trick whenever you do that, you know, you, you don't want to necessarily set the hook on slack line, because a lot of times if you do that, whenever it pops, it'll pop the fish out of the, uh, you know, it'll pop the hook loose from the fish. So I just let it get tight and I set the crap out of the hook and just way off in the distance, this big guard jumped out of the water. I, we're gonna get this sucker picked up. So not a bad outing. Some of these tips do work. You know, the main one is, is just getting out here consistently, reading the water, not being afraid to move. Uh, that, that's just one of the biggest things whenever you're out catfishing is people just wanna set up, say, hey, I'm fishing here, I'm never moving. Either they'll come to me or I'll just go home to where if you move once or twice, sometimes, you know, you'll do pretty good. Now, this ain't exactly catfishing. This was live bait fishing, cut bait fishing, and this is what you catch when you're cut bait fishing. It ain't always, uh, you know, it's not always the catfish or what you're looking for. So, all that being said, number one tip is go often. Number two is use that stringer because guys like this will run off with your pole. They'll do it every time. If you if you walk away from your rod and reel and you don't have it, if you're not prepared, if you are not don't have it secured in a good rod holder, if you don't have that stringer attached to it, you don't have that bail open, they'll be gone. You know, this dude, he'll be gone. Uh, change baits. If you catch something small here, use it you know that's what I caught this guy on it was the cut bait that I caught right here out of the river so uh, hope you guys are having a good October remember best time to fish anytime you can go